Welcome to our worship from Seal Church, led by me, Canon Anne Labar. The hymn which ends the service is sung by the choristers of St Martin in the Fields. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the first verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken-hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Luke. Chapter 21, beginning at verse 5. And as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things which you see, the days will come when there shall not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign when this is about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for this must at first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time for you to bear testimony. Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and kinsmen and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated for by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I don't suppose I'm alone in that. We've staggered through two and a half years of the Covid pandemic and its knock-on effects, the uncertainty, the isolation the disruption to education, healthcare, jobs, community life. Now we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis, with many fearing the rising prices. 
There's been political turmoil at home, with government ministers and even prime ministers coming and going at what feels like dizzying speed. And of course, this spring, war broke out on European soil as Russia invaded Ukraine. It looks as if it could all drag on for a long time, bringing sorrow and devastation to the Ukrainian people and many in Russia who don't want this war either. It's displacing many hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians from their homes, destabilising Eastern Europe and reviving the fears of nuclear war, which so many of us grew up with. And the Russian invasion of Ukraine affects those beyond its borders in other ways too, causing grain shortages and price rises around the world. On top of all of that, we're already seeing the consequences of climate change, which is fueling some of the conflicts happening now and could increasingly do so in years to come, as people compete for ever more scarce, fertile land and water. This Remembrance Sunday, then, we aren't just remembering wars from the past. Our minds are full of the wars of the present and possibly the future, too. So if we're tired, it's no wonder. We wouldn't be human if we weren't. It's all too much for us to cope with. But we wouldn't be the first to feel like this. We got used to hearing that word unprecedented in the early days of the pandemic. But the truth is that there's nothing really new under the sun. Throughout human history, People have faced things that were unprecedented to them. Wars and natural disasters, hardship and illness, things that seem to strike them out of the blue, ripping away life, health and security. It's just that until they hit us, we don't really understand what they feel like. We see people suffering on our television screens, but they're a long way away. We read about them in our history books, but they're a long time ago. When it happens to us, though, we discover we aren't as strong and self-sufficient as we thought we would be. In the words of Stevie Smith's famous poem, we are much further out than we thought, and not waving, but drowning. The people who wrote the Bible passages we heard today were people like us. The challenges they felt were unprecedented to them. Most of the, the Bible was written by people living under the cloud of war, persecution or oppression. The Jewish scriptures, which we call the Old Testament, were largely drawn together either during or just after the long period of exile when Jerusalem had been destroyed and its people had been deported to Babylon. It was devastating Everything they knew was wiped away, just as it must have felt this year to Ukrainian refugees, and just as it does to the refugees who come to this place, this country from other places too. And in our second reading today, Jesus warns about the persecution his followers will face from often fickle and frankly insane Roman emperors. Families betraying each other, hatred and destruction. Sometimes people think of the Bible as an old, dusty book, irrelevant to modern life, but it's the testimony of people like us, who lived in times like ours, people who knew that their world was in a mess, who knew the devastations of many gener generations, as Isaiah puts it, or the wars and rumours of wars that Jesus speaks of. Our biblical ancestors were often frightened. They had no idea what to do next. They were exhausted by the trials of life too, by the ever-present violence, just as we are. They felt as if they were living at the end of the world. But in the readings that we heard today, they also tell us that despite all of that, we can find hope if our eyes are open to it. It depends, according to them, 
on learning to draw on strength beyond our own strength, trusting that what we see is not necessarily all there is to see, that suffering and war don't have to have the last word. They found their strength and their vision in God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, says Isaiah, because he sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. There will be garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Just because something looks hopeless doesn't mean it is hopeless, they tell us. Jesus read those same words that Isaiah had written to a rather shocked crowd in his local synagogue at the start of his ministry. He applied them to himself. His audience was scandalised. Who did he think he was? But those who encountered him during his ministry found that this was just what he did do. People oppressed by poverty and discrimination, as well as by the occupying forces of Rome, found liberty and dignity in him. Broken hearts were bound up. People were set free. They found hope that broke through their despair and life that burst from the graveyards where their dreams were buried. And that's the same thing that many who follow Christ today find. New life, new birth in the midst of death. Sometimes that new life emerges in the stillness of prayer, but it can also be discovered through the love of others. And we, in our turn, can be good news to them, channels of God's peace, as the song puts it. We can be inspired to play our part in our community, strengthened to do the little things that make life better for others. The kind word the small act of care, the willingness to take on responsibility for things that might seem dull or trivial to us but need to be done if our community is to thrive. It's OK to be tired and it's OK to say that we are, to admit that we have no magic wand, that we can't solve the world's problems, that we have no grand answers. In fact, if we can't admit that, we won't get far at all. It's only when we know that our hands are empty that God can fill them. The Bible calls us to stretch out those empty hands, to lift up our heads, to open our eyes, to be open to the love and kindness, which is, in reality, just as real and just as present as the hatred and the sorrow are. On this Remembrance Sunday, God invites us to bring our despair and our tiredness honestly to him, so that we can find his peace within our turmoil, the peace that passes our understanding, that comes from knowing that in life and in death he is with us and will never forsake us. Amen. And so as we bring our prayers to God, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.